Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we still got a number of participants um, logging on, so, um, but this is the PIM Smart Cafe, Get Informed on Informed Delivery. And we're so happy to have you with us today. Uh, it's really gonna be a tremendous um, event that we've actually been in the works planning for uh, quite a few months now. And we've got a number of registered attendees that can show the efforts that uh, some of our social media mavens have been doing to promote this event. And so uh, it really it's a lot of interest in informed delivery and it's exciting technology. Um, so you'll note that you are muted automatically upon uh, entering today's Smart Cafe. Um, and there's two ways for you to be communicating with us. The first is you can chat in your technical questions. Uh, you will find a chat button, but that's not how we want you to pose questions to our speakers today. There is a Q&A function. You'll see that very clearly, Q&A. Um, and we want you to use that to um, ask your questions today because that allows us to answer those questions directly within that form uh, and then pass them along to our speakers uh, and then close them as they are answered. Uh, we suggest that you actually view today's program in the speaker view. So in the top right of your screen, you should see either the term gallery view or speaker view. And you'll actually want to be using the uh, speaker view. So if it says uh, speaker view, um, then you'll want to click on that. If it says gallery view, then, uh, then, then um, you are actually in the right view. Uh, things are backwards in Zoom land. Uh, it's fitting for the year 2020. <laughs> um, we want to thank um, Leslie Jones, who really brought us this topic today from Verso, and they've been a tremendous supporter. Leslie's been um, really promoting this event on her social media channels, and you can tell she's got a lot of friends because a number of people have joined us from that, uh, from those uh, communications. Um, and if you haven't joined us for these smart cafes in the past, they're also sponsored by our good friends at Konica, at Konica Minolta Business Solutions. We do these on a quarterly basis. Um, we have them available in person and we offer lunch, uh, but as you well know that those events are uh, few and far between these days. And so we hope in 2021 to be back at some point in time with our in-person luncheon and smart cafes. And so again, they'll probably expect to pay a little bit of a small fee uh, when that comes along, but for now they're going to be uh, no charge to members. Um, and before we get started, um, I want to just mention one thing that we have coming up next week, which is really an exciting event. Our HR Conference 2020 is a virtual event, of course. It's going to be the all day on September 23rd. Um, no, don't be concerned if you have to be in front of a computer all day long. We know that that's not really a tenable situation for a lot of people. We're going to be recording each one of these uh, sessions uh, as a standalone. So you'll be able to log in for what you'd like to, to see live or view them at, at a later time. And all of those sessions will be recorded and made available to registered attendees. But we've got a terrific lineup of speakers. Uh, Frank Brown from Miniman Press is a new member uh, of uh, PIM, excited to have him addressing the issues of diversity. Uh, and then, you know, Kit Welchin is a nationally known author uh, dealing with difficult people. That's not your company, that's somebody else's company, but I know you'll be really uh, uh, interested in hearing about that. Uh, labor and employment law is something that's always top of mind. And we've got some terrific panels where we've got panelists from a cross section across our industry, small companies, large companies. Um, and then we've got a number of experts uh, who will really be describing how to fulfill your talent pipeline. Because as we all know, finding new hires is not the easiest thing today. Um, and making sure that you have a fully stocked talent pipeline is a critical issue that these four people, along with our moderator, Dave Kornecki, uh, are really skilled at answering. So hope you'll join us. It's pimw.org slash HR. And now we want to get underway. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Leslie Jones from Verso. And, um, and Stephanie's going to begin to share her screen. But Leslie's going to uh, introduce today's panelists. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate all your support. Sure. Thank you, Steve, and to the PIM for sharing your platform with us this morning. I'm Leslie Jones, Account Executive for Verso Corporation covering the Midwest. 
along with my counterpart, Mark Gordon, who I believe is also on the call. Um, for those of you who um, are not aware, Verso Corporation is the only remaining American-owned and operated coated paper producer in North America. And in an effort to bring value to our customers during today's climate, Verso has partnered with the United States Postal Service to help educate our mutual customers on how we can bridge the gap between printed marketing and digital marketing. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Minneapolis St. Paul Business Alliance Specialist, Stephanie Kirschbaum and Nick Brandt, who collaborate with end users, mailers, and printers on ways they can use USPS tools and services like informed delivery, which we'll be hearing more about in a moment, to maximize their business objectives. So with that said, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Steph and Nick to get us started. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Can you all hear me all right? All right, super. Can uh, and can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Today we're going to talk a little bit about informed delivery. Nick and I are happy uh, to join this call today. Thank you to Pim and Verso for having us. Um, informed delivery is really about creating this innovative experience for consumers and mailers, enhancing that physical mail moment in today's really highly digital environment. So let's get started. On the agenda today, we're going to talk about um, an overview, basically, of informed delivery. Nick's going to touch on some industry use cases and campaign resources. Uh, and we're also going to talk about how to create an informed delivery campaign. So we'll get into the details of all this, basically how, our, how the consumers are viewing informed delivery, and then to touch on the other side on how marketers are using it. Um, again, like Steve said, we will welcome and encourage your questions in the chat box, and we'll answer those at the end of the call today. So what is informed delivery? So this is a fairly new consumer-facing feature offered by the United States Postal Service that provides our users with a digital preview of their mail that will be arriving soon. It is a service as a consumer that you opt in for. Um, these images will be available, so your mail piece images are available um, either via email notification, an online dashboard, or through a mobile app. If a mailer participates in informed delivery, um, they can provide supplemental content, which we refer to as an interactive campaign. Again, we'll show you more details about this um, throughout the presentation, but interactive campaigns include custom images, and a URL that will redirect a user to this digital experience. For example, if a, as a consumer that is enrolled in informed delivery and Macy's is sending you a mail piece, you would receive the email with the mail piece image. And if Macy's made it an interactive campaign, you as a subscriber would then be able to click on that offer, take advantage of the call to action, um, and, and basically act on it even sooner than that physical piece arriving. We really believe that nothing replaces the tactile value of hard copy mail, but USPS is responding to our consumers' increasing desire to interact and communicate digitally with everything, including their mail. So let's talk about, um, well, let's, let's start off with a little poll, I guess. Um, let's talk about your awareness. Are you or your clients using informed delivery we'd like to hear? And if so, what are some of the primary benefits? Um, again, just give us a, an awareness of your knowledge of informed delivery and, and why you might use it. Uh, with Steve launching a poll, I'm not seeing it yet. Here it is. Thank you. Give everyone a few seconds. Encourage you to not. Are you able to vote? Oh, it's okay. Hang on. 
it says host and panelists cannot vote. Yeah, right. so hopefully the participants yeah. can. I don't show anybody voting. Don't know why. Oh, someone has a no. Oh, they said they've they've been able to vote. Oh, okay. All right. It just so they're voting. Maybe there's just a delay. All right. Okay. Here's okay. the result. All right. Okay. Look at that. Um, Ooh, so the majority of the votes, yeah, <laughs> okay. they, they are not using or promoting this service. Well, perfect. Um, that's, right. that's the most, but we see other options checked for, checking for important mail, saving a copy of mail received, and taking action. So other reasons that consumers love informed delivery is really, it's a little bit of a security, right? When you, when you get an image of what's coming in your mailbox is that security of knowing, hey, you know, I can look at my email and see that everything that's supposed to be in my mailbox is also there. So that's one of the reasons consumers also love it. Um, we, we also have the ability to track packages. So we're going to get into that a little bit. But tracking packages is another reason that consumers love this. Um, as many of you can probably relate, if you're working long hours, you'll get this email in the morning that says, hey, here's what's coming in your mail today. So simply knowing what is in your mailbox and determining if you, if you even need to get your mail today, what's in there and do I need to make a stop and pick up what's in my mail? Um, it's also really fun to see if you're receiving an invite, um, any of those things that are really personal, it kind of builds that in anticipation for getting to the mailbox. So those are just a few reasons that consumers really love informed delivery and, um, and we'll get into to some statistics about how much they are really um, enjoying it and promoting it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how the feature works. So we, we really are um, using our existing mail imaging processes um, based on the Intelligent Mail Barcode to facilitate this whole entire process. So as a consumer, again, like I mentioned, it's up to a consumer to opt in for this service. So they go on to USPS.com and they provide their email address, their identity is verified and they're signed up. The mail is then imaged during processing. Again, USPS uses our existing processes. We've gathered digital images of the mail um, for many, many years. Uh, so now we found a way to really incorporate it. And then we match the images of the mail piece to the delivery point and then in turn to the informed delivery users. After that, a notification is emailed to the user. Again, these emails typically will come early in the morning. Um, I would say more often than not before 8 a.m. USPS will notify informed delivery users of the mail that'll be arriving soon. And again, through their email or dashboard or app, however they have opted to, um, to view these images. And then as usual, the user receives their mail piece and their regular mail delivery. So it sounds like a lot of you have not signed up for it based on that poll response. So we really would encourage you to go ahead and sign up for informed delivery. And hopefully, you know, by the end of the presentation today, we've given you enough um, information as to why we think you should do that. Um, when you are having conversations with your clients and business partners, having that true experience of this service will really give you, uh, put you in a better position on how we're tying the value of print and enhancing it with um, that digital and, and increasing the experience of the mail moment. Um, yeah, so I, I hope you all hop, hop on and uh, hopefully sign up for this informed delivery service. So let's continue. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. So let's talk a little bit about where are these consumers. So informed delivery is available in over 31,000 zip code locations nation nationwide, and we've got a really significant growing user base. Um, we've, we wanted to share this visual. As you can see, it, it is already over 18% of a national saturation of subscribers. Um, we're growing at a pace of 350 to 400,000 new users every week. 
USPS has seen a really significant increase in the number of subscribers, and it, it has happened since COVID. Um, is that partly due to USPS maybe promoting and bringing more awareness to this service? That, that probably plays into it. The service has also become available for PO Box deliveries, so we really expect these numbers to continue to grow at a rate like they currently are. You'll also notice by this map, um, you know, the large metro areas, right, are, are the areas that we're seeing with users over 20%. So it gives you an idea of um, basically where, where the users are and the um, higher user base. Okay, so what are the basic elements of a campaign? All informed delivery campaigns start with a mail piece that targets the right message to the right audience. Um, just like any um, well-planned marketing strategy, that, that will be key. Included in that is customized content that can be used in place of a grayscale image of the mail piece that comes from our mail processing equipment. The interactive content contains a ride-along image and URLs that are clickable, creating that interactive experience. The other parts of the campaign will include where a mailer um, provides the start and end dates of the campaign, of course, which coincides with the drop date and mail date. And then lastly, um, the, mailing, the mailing details really are um, submitting the mid and serial number range in that mailing. So how can a mailer participate? Now this, this screen probably looks somewhat similar to what we've seen previously, but um, we were talking about from a consumer standpoint previously, now we're gonna talk about from a mailer, from that marketing perspective, how does this work? So basically, um, you know, they're creating their, and inducting their hard copy mail as usual and providing some additional elements and supplemental content to USPS to facilitate this campaign. What you'll see here first is to plan your campaign. Um, it is optional to do a pre-campaign analysis. Um, I'm not sure exactly the number of the percentage of, of mailers that participate in the pre-campaign, but basically we can tell you, you give us our list, I should say you submit your list through a portal, and that will give you the percentage of the audience, the percentage of your list that's subscribed to informed delivery so you can determine um, basically what your additional touch could be. So what happens after that? You prepare the mailing. Again, the details are all provided uh, through either a campaign portal or postal one, and your mailing is then inducted. And then on the back end, we're able to analyze and, and view the post-campaign results. So we can have a conversation with mailers to really say, you know, what is your email open rate? What is your click-through rate? Um, how do we, how do, how do we gauge that response? And, and are you happy with that? Interacting with the digital content is a um, really great feature that, that we're able to provide post-campaign support on. So how to participate, uh, any organization can conduct an informed delivery campaign um, as long as the mail pieces are automation compatible and contain that valid intelligent mail barcode. One of the greatest features of this service is that there are no fees. This is a free service, so anyone can conduct a campaign um, during, during this period and um, why, why not? Why not take that additional touch to, to get the touch, to build your brand and um, increase your, your ROI of your marketing campaign? Again, that campaign can be submitted by a mailer um, or the mail service provider. And, and it can be done even cohesively where um, both are, you know, kind of playing their own, their own part. So uh, lots of great options. Okay, so I talked a little bit about this. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but the campaigns really can be submitted through two ways, through Postal One or through what we call our Mailer Campaign Portal. Our mailer campaign portal is, is really user friendly and over 90% of the campaigns that are submitted are submitted through the portal. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And um, in the future, you know, when it, when it comes time to, to submitting a campaign and you are looking for help, both Nick and I or 
Um, you know, we have other contacts and colleagues here at the Postal Service to help and answer detailed questions about the campaign submission. We just wanted to give you a little bit of background on that. Okay, so talking about what type of data is shared. So this, this screen will give you a little idea of what does that pre-campaign report look like and what does a post-campaign report look like. Um, this pre-campaign report, we should probably actually change the slide. It, um, I, most campaign, most pre-campaigns in this time period always are over 20%. Based on that map that we've seen earlier, based on the number of subscribers, the pre-campaign report will typically return uh, a saturation density of 20% or higher. So keep that in mind. And then the post-campaign report here, you really get to see some of the details. The number of um, you know, physical pieces that are being sent out that are informed, that are um, participating in some form of informed delivery, and what percentage or what number of those are getting that through an email. And then uh, it goes on to the email open rate, which is, is an awesome uh, open rate that Nick's going to elaborate a little bit further on. The number of click-throughs, so basically when a user participates and clicks through that digital content, we're able to turn around and say, you know, hey, Mr. Mailer, here's the um, performance of that campaign. There actually is an additional um, detailed report that goes into some additional statistics to that a lot of mailers find very beneficial. So a lot of great, a lot of great data on the on the back end to use for for future, um, you know, if something needs to be changed in future campaigns. All right. So um, I'm going to be turning it over to Nick to talk about some industry use cases and some campaign resources. And I think um, right off the bat, we're going to kick it off with another poll question. All right, thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, everyone, uh, for having us here today. Uh, great to uh, be um, be joined uh, with all of you and and speak more about uh, informed delivery and uh, how it can benefit not only the consumer but the uh, the marketer uh, potentially as well. So, um, another poll question: In your opinion, what percentage of your direct mail customers are aware of the benefits of an active informed delivery campaign? We'll just give everyone 30 seconds, Nick. But okay. Ten more seconds. All right. And there are your results. That is kind of what I had expected. And thus the need to get this uh, informed delivery uh, information out to, to our customers and, and clients, because it it's really could be a benefit potentially um, for that call to action and uh, getting that, as, as Stephanie uh, alluded to, the, uh, the, the digital and physical, the multiple touch um, on one mail piece. So anyway, go ahead, Steph. All right, so how can some of our industries use informed delivery? Um, I actually was uh, about a year ago put on a team within our business alliance group to come up with not only the industries uh, that may benefit from using informed delivery, but uh, you know some of the, the subcategories. Uh, as an example, the financial services you can you can you know transfer a balance or activate a credit card, and uh, it dawned on me after I got to about the fifth or sixth page of coming up with things that it's really there's infinite possibilities of how you could use informed delivery. Um, you know, some of these are just, just you know, very um, generic, but, you know, your telecom to upgrade your service or, uh, you know, add a device or, you know, uh, re renewing a subscription. Um, you know, lately with all the uh, different natural disasters with the flooding and the wildfires and people getting displaced from their homes, um, they could really use informed delivery on checking to see if there's any important information that's going to the local post office that they need to get for insurance papers or, 
or maybe it's a check from the, you know, from the government or their insurance company. Uh, but the other thing was, you know, donating to these nat natural disasters, um, you know, click here to donate kind of a thing. So from a marketing standpoint, um, informed delivery um, is very, very effective. I've been working with this uh, pretty much since its inception about two years ago. And I've seen the uh, savvy marketers and printers really take a, a foothold of this because they see the potential of what it could mean for their, uh, you know, either return on investment or call to action, what have you. So um, again, this is just a few, um, a 50,000 foot view of what you can do and how industries are using informed delivery. Next, please, there you go. So what are some of our consumers saying about informed delivery? Well, as you can see, it's, it's very high numbers, which is good. But you know, about 93% are satisfied or very satisfied. 94% would even recommend it to a friend, colleague, uh, or family member. Um, and 90 or 79% of uh, respondents primarily, you know, view their informed delivery by clicking their email. Um, but th this is one uh, that's very compelling. And about 79% of users check their physical mailboxes every day. But those in consumers that are signed up for informed delivery, check their form delivery email about 88% uh, uh, of the time. So just, uh, yeah, thank you, Steph. Um, I've given these presentations a lot to a lot of different people and I had a self-proclaimed millennial say, you know what, Nick, I check my mailbox about once every week, week and a half, but I check my informed delivery email every single day. So. This goes to show you of how effective it can be. And, and to couple with that, um, just again from the marketing side of it, um, you know, I shared this uh, a couple weeks ago on the presentation with, with Leslie and Steve. And, and, you know, let's, from a marketing standpoint, if you have a gatekeeper of the mailbox, like my girlfriend who will throw away the Cabela's ad because she knows I'm going to take some sort of action and, and, and you know, take that coupon and go spend money and throws it away before I get home. If I didn't sign up for informed delivery, I would have never seen that ad or been able to act um, on their sales. And, and therefore, our clients and our, 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 our uh, customers, are that ROI potentially for them now just went down because I wasn't able to, to view their ad and, and, and go to their store or, or something online. So just as an example of how it can be used um, in that regards as well. So go ahead, Steph. Um, so who has conducted campaigns? So there's been many mailers um, throughout many different uh, industries. And as of right now, um, we've had over 1,500 mailers that have, uh, have done campaigns or that have tested. Um, and over 58,000 campaigns have been completed across all kinds of industries. Um, but mostly we see the, the insurance, the e-commerce, the retail, and healthcare. Um, many, if not all of these mailers come back and do additional campaigns. They're mostly one-off campaigns, but they, we do have a, a several that are doing continuous um, campaigns daily. Um, so uh, it can be done. And if, the, if, if there's any of you that are looking to potentially uh, get into something like that, you can reach out to Steph or I or get in touch with Leslie or Steve and they can put you in touch with us and we can assist you along the way because it does get a little bit more complicated. But, um, and campaigns are conducted on all classes of mail. So it, it, they can be letters and flats. The flats are a little bit different because they're not going through the same processing equipment as the letters, but you still can do a campaign on a flat size mail piece. So some of the results that we've seen, um, as you can see, 75, over 75% um, average email open rate over the last six months. So it's pretty high considered, um, you know, to the industry average. So there's also an enhanced call to action um, and it drives that click-through rate uh, of, again, more than double the industry average. Uh, so that really is another benefit or value for doing an informed delivery campaign. Um, and we are looking to partner with mailers to evaluate click-throughs and, and conversions. Again, that's, you know, depending on if they want to share that information with us or not. So, um, you know, we're looking to, to, to really work with our mailers to see if we can get some of, some of that data that we can share with the industry. 
going. There you go. So just kind of give you an overview of uh, some user data, and I'll kind of explain why there's a difference of registered users versus registered households. But there's over 30 million, uh, as of today, registered users. Uh, registered households of uh, uh, just under 24 million. The number of email and users are 25 million, and the email open rate is again six month average of 75 percent. So the to get in with the the, the distinction between registered users or registered households. So, um, you know, I have one household, but I could have multiple people within the household signed up for informed delivery. So there's the distinction there and why the number of registered users are higher. And the number of um, email enabled users versus the total number of registered users. So about 25 million consumers that have signed up for informed delivery had opted to get the email pushed to them as definitely said earlier uh, about, I get mine between 7.30 and eight o'clock in, in the morning. The other 5 million registered users are opting to go to either usps.com uh, for our on online dashboard or using our uh, free downloadable uh, app for their phone. Go ahead, Steph. So what value do campaigns add? Well. I mean, the biggest one that we've talked about is the additional impressions and interactive content, which really can further, you know, um, get that purchase or recipient to engage and respond to whatever sort of call to action is uh, the mailer is trying to achieve. Um, but it offers the email open rates that is twice more than the industry average, right? And the reason that is, is they're opting into this. They're signing up to receive the service. It's not like they're getting, they're opening up their, their, you know, their uh, Gmail uh, email inbox and they got, you know, 500 emails that day and it's from JC Penney's and this company and that company. They're not looking for those, but they are looking for their informed delivery email. Um, again, it generates multiple impressions from one single mail piece for no extra cost other than the price of post. So you get multiple impressions for no additional cost. Um, it could, it could drive consumer response with that interactive content, that, that URL that's clickable, that'll take them to a landing page for them to donate, for them to sign up, for them to, you know, for whatever it may be. Um, you know, and just think of it as like, um, I use this example all the time too, is it, it's, it's really ease of use, right? They're, they're gonna be able to sit at Johnny and Susie's swim practice after a long day's work, throw, oh, I could sign them up for their their school pictures or, uh, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, instead of going home, logging on the computer after cooking a meal, you know, if, so that ease of use is really a, another driving force for uh, consumers to, to, to take some sort of action. And we are able to reach consumers digitally just by merely knowing their physical address. I know a lot of questions I get is how safe is it? How safe, how, how can the neighbor next door just by knowing my address, sign up for informed delivery. Well, Stephanie um, went over that a little while ago as well, as there are some security questions, and it's really kind of neat because the security questions when you do uh, sign up for informed delivery are based on the mail pieces that are coming to your mailbox. So they may ask you, have you had a mortgage with one of these five companies in the last five years? And unless somebody's going through your mailbox, you're, you're really gonna be the only ones to, to know. It's also um, HIPAA compliant, because we don't need to know who's living at that house. We just need to know their physical address. So privacy protected, HIPAA protected. So some of those insurance companies or healthcare companies uh, can definitely utilize informed delivery as well. Um, it can, you know, potentially will increase uh, your ROI uh, on the direct spend, uh, mail spend side. Um, and it provides that additional data insights to optimize your marketing spend. You know, maybe you can do some A-B testing to see which mail piece is getting a better response rate on there. You'll be able to get that in that post campaign data. So that'll, that'll help marketers be able to determine and optimize their, their marketing spend. Go ahead, Steph. So some defining some of the key elements of informed delivery. Again, it's a well-designed, well-branded mail piece um, that's gonna replace that grayscale image. Um, you're gonna give us some of the mailing details, um, you know, a valid mid and or a, um, the IMB serial number range on the mail piece. Um, you know, some of the other things are the campaign is, is the, 
is in the co uh, combination of the mail piece or, or write along image and the supplemental content, uh, which can be a separate image. It doesn't have to be the same. Uh, we do caution that the representative image, the larger image, uh, as you see here on, on, the, on the cell phone, is pretty darn close, if not exactly close to the mail piece they're gonna be, that the consumer's gonna get in their mailbox. Um, we'd hate to confuse the consumer, thinking that they're gonna get one piece via their informed delivery email and get a totally separate piece, may, albeit from the same company, but um, they're thinking that maybe they didn't receive that mail piece that day. So, and then just the supplemental content, you know, which URL or, you know, landing page you wanna drive the consumers to, to land on to take some sort of action. So it's pretty much a one-stop shop for, you know, um, get, getting some consumers to, to take, take that, that call to action. These are just some sample campaigns of what a, uh, on the left there, maybe what a telecom uh, informed delivery campaign would look like. And on the right, you know, a finance company, click here to get started. Um, so it, it's, it's really that ease of use that, that's gonna drive the consumers to take that action. Go ahead, Steph. So um, again, I know we're in the in the midst of a, a pretty pretty heated political um, era right now. But you know, uh, political use of informed delivery has has been huge, and, and a, a lot of um, parties have been using informed delivery. Click here to to register to vote. Click here to donate. Um, kind of a thing, but. You know, there's really three touch points or three opportunities on the mail pieces. Um, you know, you're gonna have the physical mail piece, the email preview, and then the interactive write along image, all from a, a single mail piece. And and really, it's gonna it's it's enabling our political mailers to to be able to, um, again, ha get that ease of use to to get their constituents to take some sort of action. And the biggest one, to be honest, with the biggest two have been voter registration and donation. So, you know, again, you're sitting somewhere maybe in a in a Zoom meeting at at, at noon on a on a on a Wednesday and, and you get that email and you can click here to donate to your local party if you'd like or or what have you. So, you know, again, it's it's this is just a, an example of how the, the the political parties are using informed delivery. And and to be honest, um, there hasn't been too many that has not used informed delivery for to get their message out. So um, it's, again, it's a great way to reach reach consumers both digi digitally and, and physically. So another poll, and this is more of a right or wrong answer. Um, what is the email open rate of the of general email versus informed delivery email? So be distinguishing between the two, what do you think uh, the the percentages would be. We'll give everyone just a few more seconds. Okay. Okay, pretty close, pretty close. But the correct answer is C. If you recall before we, we went into the email open rate of informed delivery and it was 75.4%. So uh, it's a lot higher than, than what you think versus just the, the average you know, everyday emails that we get in our personal uh, inbox. So it's quite compelling to be honest. And Nick, one thing I'll add, um, just a reminder, this, the email does come from at usps.gov. So again, coming from that trusted source, right? Other than, um, you know, some of the other emails in our box that people might be hesitant to click on. Yeah, if there's phishing or things like that, sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to kick it off, Nick, and I'll take sure. it after you? Yeah, so as we stated uh, prior, that there were, there were two ways that you can submit an informed delivery campaign. Uh, one was working with Postal One, and 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 those are going to be more your complex campaigns. Maybe you might have different mail pieces for different regions. If there's a coupon booklet or what have you, um, I know uh, some some folks like 
you know, Vlasis and Valpac and Money Mailer, those type of, you know, they have a lot of different regions with a lot of different, you know, uh, uh, you know, businesses that are advertising in those. So they would use the postal one side. Um, this this is, is uh, going through the business customer gateway. And again, it's, it's, it's another uh, application that the post office uses that you can use it for many different things. And one of them is to submit an informed delivery campaign. So if you're not already signed up, you would, you would sign up with the username and password. Um, and you can find the link to the business customer gateway on usps.com as well. It'll be at the bottom of the first page there. And then from there, uh, it bring, it'll bring you to the welcome page. which will give you several, several All right. options. Go ahead, Steph. Yeah, so once you're in the business customer gateway, um, again, there's several options in here, but you're gonna click on other services and then you'll see the mailer campaign for it all. So laying it all out here for you, just to kind of give you an idea, click by click where you're gonna go. Um, and, and if the first, you'll, as you'll see here, those other like blue boxes where it says get access, if it's your first time, you will have to click on it to get access. Um, I think that's basically it, Nick, right? I mean, they just click it and whoever's the um, business service administrator for the business customer gateway will allow you to get access to the informed delivery mail or campaign portal, and then Correct. you'll carry on from there. Correct. So from there, um, Stephanie had spoken previously about running a pre-campaign analysis. So you have a, a, a you know, a mailing list of, of 10,000 addresses and you we want to see out of those 10,000 addresses, how many of, of those are signed up for informed delivery. It's not going to tell you who or which addresses, but it'll give you a percentage or a number of out of the 10,000, there were 2,000 uh, residents that were signed up for informed delivery, just to kind of give you an idea um, of how many consumers are signed up um, from that particular mailing list. And, and it says the, the report may take up to 75 minutes. Um, that's if there's probably multiple million records in that file. The, it mostly comes back within 30 seconds, so don't be alarmed there. I think as we as we continue to see the number of subscribers grow, I would almost expect that the pre-campaign analysis might become less, right? Because if there's an opportunity to touch more and more people, why not right. take advantage of it? Exactly. But definitely a great option. Yep. Okay. So let's dive into um, the campaign creation page. So initially on those on those first slides, I talked a little bit about what submitted to make a campaign active. But here you'll see, um, you're gonna give it a brand display name. And the brand display name is also what the consumer will see. So basically it's, you know, here's where you would enter Macy's, right? Campaign title and campaign code, those are internal things that you might use. It might be, you know, um, September 2020 fall campaign, whatever you wanna use for reference in those campaign title and campaign code. We talked about the start date and end dates, and it gives you some uh, date ranges here talking about um, a start, da start date uh, time frame of three days before your, um, before and three days after your in-home delivery date. So make sure you're giving yourself kind of a, a good window there. And, and we do see, I think, you know, mailers even broadening that out a little bit more than the three days on each end. So um, you'll be submitting, of course, your mailer ID. The mailer ID that is printed on the mail piece also needs to be the same mailer ID that is submitted in the campaign creation. Um, there will be a serial number range. Um, for, for mailers, they'll be working with their mail service provider to get the serial number range that is going to be part of the, part of the campaign. And then uh, the mail piece shape. So is this a letter or is it a flat? Um, we, we haven't really talked a lot about this, but you know, uh, letter imaging, letters are imaged, right? So when you get the email, you're gonna see the black and white image of your letters. That isn't the case for flats. So it might say an image for which we currently don't have 
um, a mail piece for which we don't currently have an image, excuse me, um, is coming in your mail today. So when you create a campaign for a flat, it gives you the opportunity then to submit that representative image of a flat. Um, Nick, anything you want to add on the letters and flats part of things there? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple things actually. Um, so the flat, it's it, it because it's not going through that same processing equipment, in, in if you do a flat interactive informed delivery campaign, you will have that representative image of that flat size mail piece. And then there'll, there'll be some verbiage of coming to your mailbox soon. So it, it might be there that day or the very next day, but at least you know you can expect it. And I just wanna elaborate a little bit on the, 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 end, the begin date and start date. I just wanna say that the maximum time frame is 45 days and that's because of the unique the intelligent mail barcodes need to be unique for 45 days but stephanie is it was great advice to give yourself a little leeway prior it doesn't have to be the exact dates of when the mail is you know dropped at the post office and when you think it'll be delivered by there might be some production issues there could be some delays in transportation not on our side of course but um you know think things come up and and you just want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer. I even suggest to go out a week on either side in case we get, get some stragglers coming through on the back end, what have you. And, and then as far as the serial number range, um, you don't have to use a serial number range. Um, you do have to use the mid, but any mail piece with that mid, whether it's involved in that, if that particular mail piece or not, will be included in the campaign. So that's why if we're using a mid for maybe several different clients, then you wanna uh, put that serial number range in. And it just has to be the very first one and the very last serial number. You don't have to list all 10,000 serial numbers. So I just wanted to clarify on that. Mm -hmm. yep. Good call. All right, so next. All right. Yeah, yeah, next you'll be, um, that clearly branded colorful image that 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 you know you you spent time working on what you wanted to replace the gray grayscale image with. Uh, this is where you would enter um, the images into the the campaign. So um, it's really you, you know it, it's a drop down box that you can choose from a PDF file. Actually, I think you can just click on that the, the upper image and it shows up, and then you can uh, you know upload that image and then uh, depending on what ride along image you may want, it could be the company's logo, what have you, uh, you could upload that image as well. And then it's just adding the URL um, all on this page. So this is where you, you um, enter the interactive content to the, uh, to the campaign here. And um, in regards to the interactive, the link that you're providing, the URL, it does need to be a secure uh, HTTPS, right? A secure link. And um, the image sizes, you can see here when you're trying to upload images, um, it, will, it will reject it if you don't meet the imaging requirements. So um, it's, it's pretty user friendly and um, you can just adjust the pixels to get those images as you need them. Okay, so then it'll give you the option to basically review everything that you've submitted, right? You can, um, you've got all the details then on one page and it's your next step really is, am I saving this as a draft at this point or am I um, continuing and, and basically moving to the next steps of submitting the campaign? So again, this is just, just letting you know that uh, at least for this particular campaign, any fashion, fall sale, you got the start date, the end date, campaign code, and then right now the, draft, the status is just a draft because in this particular example, they've, they've, they've decided just to, to, to uh, click and or, yeah, save and um, for now. But you, you, you can save it at any point. You can, if you know a week ahead of time that you're gonna be doing a campaign, you could uh, submit and save and then go back in the day before and go ahead and submit it. So you can really, you know, maybe get some of the elements in here just to kind of save on the process if you'd like. Um, but it really gives you the option uh, to, you know, um, submit and save and, and maybe you want someone to review it later before you submit it. 
Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think that I touched on it on the last screen, but there is um, the option, and of course, you would want to use it. But you would, send, you can send yourself that that mock campaign where it's um, right. you, you can put in up to five email addresses. So have your marketing team review this draft campaign that you have created, and they will get um, basically imaging of what it would look like if that were an active. Um, email. So an email pops in and, and gives them some idea of what that campaign would look like. Right. So, All right. Yeah, um, go, go ahead, Steph. Okay, you can, we'll, we'll tag team this one. It's an important one, right? Yeah. Um, so we have a mailing promotion going on right now. And it's, is involved with informed delivery and a 2% upfront discount on postage. This is really a great opportunity to encourage marketers to test. The promotion goes through November 30th, so there's still plenty of time. Um, I think Nick and I right now probably are getting emails on the daily about, you know, as we work with mail service providers that are participating and we're just, you know, giving them feedback or working to get them approved with the promotions team. There is a little bit of a process. You do have to get approval of your imaging. You need to submit the mail piece. Um, what am I missing there, Nick? What else do we need from in regards to the promotion? Well, it's, you know, the, the, the mail piece can only be the front or the back of the actual mail piece that's going to be, yeah. that the consumer is going to receive in their mailbox that, that day. You can't vary at all um, from the design. Uh, you, you know, you can still upload the color, colorful image of, of the mail piece, but it's got to be the one that they're going to receive in their mailbox. It can't vary. And then the second thing, yes, is a, uh, it, the URL must be that secure website. Um, the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's really not that that arduous of a task or to get, you know, to get signed up. And, you know, you got Steph and I have some resources as well. So um, if you hit a roadblock or anything like that, you know, definitely reach out to us. We can help you. Um, yeah, so I, it's, you know, and as far as entering the campaign and the gateway that we just went over, um, Again, once once you have all the, the the info, the data, you know what piece you're going to use, the, the the mid, the serial number range, the dates. It literally takes about three to five minutes to upload that campaign in the business customer gateway. And I know the first time can be again a little difficult you know, working your way through it. So um, if you do happen to to start a campaign on behalf of yourself or one of your your customers or clients. Um, yeah, please feel free to reach out to us and we can help walk you through it and, and you'll, 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 you'll see that's pretty easy. All right. So we do have a, a business mailer website um, on, uh, for informed delivery and the email address is there. Uh, you can view an interactive video on informed delivery and user testimonial videos uh, to learn about the benefits. Um, we have resources such as FAQs, uh, campaign guides. Uh, we have the image requirements and uh, basically your one-stop shop other than Steph and I for uh, uh, informed delivery. And it also has like users and household data. So you can see uh, you can drill down to a specific zip code and find out how many residents in that zip code have signed up for informed delivery um, or a, you know, a, maybe a, a, a three-digit area like Minneapolis or St. Paul or uh, Rochester, Minnesota or, you know, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. So you really have the capability of finding out how many people are signed up in a specific area. So um, other than that, um, any, we can go through questions if you'd like, Leslie, um, at this point, but I just want to say thank you for everybody for your time. Um, thank you to Steve and Leslie and uh, everybody at PIM and Versos for setting this up. And it was our pleasure um, to, to be on the call with you today. Thanks, Absolutely. Nick. I, I think Chris, Chris Davis has a few questions from the Q&A. Um, Chris, could you share, share any of the, those Q&As that have come in? Oh, we have one more poll question we forgot about that we stuck okay. in at the end. <laughs> do you want me to do, do the um, Q&As first? We can what do you think, Stephanie? 
can you hear me? Why don't we? Why don't we? Because those might be more important right now than the pool. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So there is a there's a question that um, is: Will any of the states use this track mail and ballots outbound from consumer? My clients would be interested, and in, I'd like to be prepared. Thanks. I'm not sure that I completely understood um, the question. Did you pick it up, Nick? Do you want me to say it again? Maybe. Will any of the states use this to track mail in ballots? Out, okay. Outbound from consumer by clients. My clients would be interested and I'd like to be prepared. Well, I don't know if they'd use it necessarily to track the mail. Um, I guess I haven't heard of any states in particular using that, um, using informed deliveries for, for that specific reason. Doesn't mean that they're not going to. Um, I just might not have heard about it. But um, yeah, I, as far as for tracking purposes, I mean, it would be a good way to, but then how would you know when it got, the state would know when, you, when it got de delivered. I guess the other thing that the states could use uh, would be informed visibility, which is kind of our postal tr internal postal tracking. Um, because they're, the, the states are going to use a political uh, service type ID in their intelligent mail barcode that identifies that particular mail piece as a political mail piece. Um, but I don't, I don't think they'd necessarily use informed delivery in, in that regard for, for tracking purposes, if that answers your question. Okay. Um, the next question by the same person is, can you explain the testing? I'm assuming that they were in reference to Nick. You had mentioned like A/B testing, right? So, oh, um, yeah. If that's if that's the specific question, basically marketers are able to put in two different calls to action, right? And then they're able to gauge what is driving a greater response. So basically, just like you would in a marketing test, you're just incorporating that into your informed delivery campaign. Which one is driving the greater response? That's what that's where the opportunity to test comes into play. Okay. Um, another question, um, are your samples available as templates? Yes. Yes, and we have case studies as well. So whoever um, that contact is, you know, feel free to get, get in touch with us and we can send you um, case studies and, and other examples. So certainly we've, we've actually got quite a bit of content out there. There's what's called a next gen book, giving you all kinds of ideas on how to incorporate this. So yeah. Okay. Um, new question. Do you have a prospective client informed delivery informational guide? Well, um, we have a whole website geared towards, um, you know, mailers that are considering it with a whole host of questions. There are tutorials on there on how to do that. There is um, campaign guides. Yes, there's, there's a lot of information on there. Um, if there's something specific that isn't on the link that was provided just a couple of slides back, again, we can certainly um, support that. Anything else to add to that, Nick? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute. Still on mute, Nick. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, we uh, well uh, on our uh, USPS.com website. You know, on the informed delivery side, we do have an informed delivery for businesses link uh, that's specific for businesses versus the consumer, with multiple resources. Um, to assist our, our, our customers, our business customers with, 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 with those types of, of topics. Okay, I have another question. Um, when will the post office start charging for this service and how much will they charge for it? Okay, I'm gonna take this one if you don't mind, Steph. My, pers my personal opinion is, I hope we do not charge for it. First of all, I think it's such a benefit to both the, 
the mail owner and the postal service that I think it would, I think we, again, this is my personal opinion. I think we'd shoot ourselves in the foot if we charge for it. With that being said, I do think if they were to charge some type of uh, monetary fee, I think it would be on the post campaign data that you would receive on the back end of a, of a, of a campaign. Um, you know, it might be a, a pretty, you know, a nominal fee of, you know, five, $10 a campaign. I don't know for sure, but uh, again, my uh, opinion is, is they, we, we should not be charging at all because it is such a, a benefit and it does bring value to both the postal service and the mail owner. Okay. I have the next question as, will you be, will you ever be expanding to scanning flaps? I don't, I don't see that. Do you, Nick? No, I don't, I don't see it right now either. Um, you know, we just, we just started with the, uh, uh, what's that, uh, Stephanie, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. The, FSS? Yes, the FSS, which does, it does scan some, but it doesn't scan all of them. And I think it's, it's because of the, um, some of the flats aren't as rigid as, you know, physical mail pieces. So it's in, and it, it potentially could damage processing equipment or more importantly, damage some of the mail piece. So um, uh, that, I think that's the reason why, unless we, we, we hit some sort of, uh, you know, mind blowing, um, piece of equipment that that'll that'll take care of that for us i don't see it in the near future anyway but that doesn't mean it might, might not happen down the, down the line somewhere okay um this is from someone that asked questions before about the testing and um she said you referred to testing the informed delivery service i guess this means initial participants and then she said thank you Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I well, I'm thinking that might have been the um, the uh, slide with the map of the United States, maybe, Steph. But yeah, and initially, with yeah, if if that's if that's could be what you're talking about. Um, yes, initially we tested in some of the larger markets, uh, you know, east east coast like Philadelphia and you know New York areas, and then a spot on the west coast to see what type of response that we were getting and yeah we were getting quite a bit of positive responses back and that's why we have um, now opened it up to the 31,000 zip codes to include residential PO boxes. I, I hope that answers your question. Okay um, I think it did okay. but um, the next person said thank you and I'm assuming she meant to say this will help in presenting to possible client users. So that's just a comment to pass along. And then um, this question is, will informed delivery be available for business mail? As it is my understanding, it is only for residen residential mail at this time. Yes, and, and, and I'll, I'll um, it currently is not. And the reason being is if uh, Stephanie was the CEO at ABC Printing, and she had decided to leave and now she's the CEO at XYZ Printing and is able to receive some of the email notifications for ABC Printing, then that might give her a competitive advantage or some type of insider knowledge, which is, 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 not, is not good for anybody. We are working on enhancements to um, our security levels to potentially include uh, business addresses at a later date. Great. Um, we have the next question is, is there a plan to integrate Pearl technology? Again, yes, they're working on that um, as, a, as, a, as another enhancement. Um, I honestly thought it would have been out this year, but um, I'm thinking it may be pushed back, I think with the election um, going on um, and getting the uh, election mail out, they decided to push that back uh, potentially to next year, but yes, 
the, the plans are to in, be able to include, include pearls um, in the near future as well. Okay. Um, I have what appears to be our last question, um, and it's really not a question. It's um, just their opinion. They want to say, I think this service is hugely helpful for the direct mail industry and the mail industry in general. Kudos to the USPS. Hey. Thank you. Good deal. Uh, well, and, uh, and I can also say as it's been heartwarming to see the country pulling behind the USPS and really starting to understand the challenges that we've all known about. Uh, and uh, I hope you are all heartened as USPS employees that a lot of people in the country are pulling for you. Um, so uh, thank, you. thank you, Stephanie and Nick. Uh, it was a terrific presentation. I'm glad we had a lot of good feedback and um, we've had most of our crowd stick with us until the end. I wanna give Leslie just an opportunity to say a few, uh, few final words. Hey, Steve and Leslie, I have one other um, question. I know, Leslie, you had asked about one last poll question and I don't think Steve saw it. Um, but you said, I'm curious for those who have clients using an interactive interformed delivery campaigns, what kind of response rates are they seeing versus direct mail without informed delivery and or digital marketing? So, and um, okay. Leslie and sent that to you, Steve, and okay. I think it was to be another poll question. <laughs> Got it. Well, I was just curious during the question and answer. So if there's anyone on the call still whose uh, customers uh, are using and delivery period, are you guys seeing um, a greater response rate, um, which is what I would, would think the answer would be, but I'm just curious. Um, our data shows that uh, direct mail actually receives about a 90% response rate versus, um, you know, just traditional email or digital, as we heard earlier, that's around some, um, probably 15 and 25. I was curious if anyone yeah. else there had feedback on that. Sorry, Leslie, my Q&A wasn't working, so I didn't get that. Oh, that's okay. Maybe if there's a suggestion, if any um, members have a response that they could email Leslie um, Jones, which is on the screen right now, sure. and, let, and, and provide that information to her. Sure. Thanks, Preston. Right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, you know, again, on behalf of PIM and the United States Postal Service, First Oak Corporation, and Conica and Minolta, uh, we, we just want to thank you for making time to spend your day with us. We hope you found the information informative and hopefully a little bit inspiring too. Um, on the screen, you can see my contact info as well as uh, my counterpart, Mark Gordon's, and the geography that we cover. Please jot down our, um, our email and phone numbers and uh, feel free to reach out um, to us for any assistance on upcoming print projects. Um, also on the left hand side of the screen there, you will see a list of all of Verso's seven and nine point USPS postal guaranteed projects or products, excuse me, for uh, direct mailing purposes. And all of you on the call um, will re be receiving an electronic version of our new pro, uh, promotion called Vote for Verso. Um, and inside um, there is um, kind of a, a grade selector tool that provides you with all of the specifications that you need to um, pick the right product for um, the project that you're working on. So these of course are available in print and I would love to mail you a copy. So when I send you an email with the digital copy, just respond to me with your mailing address and I'd be happy to pop some in the mail for you. So if, if no one else has anything else, um, thank you again. Uh, we apologize for running a little bit over, but um, you know, it was nice uh, that you, a compliment, I think that you were um, just, we had so many questions. So um, mm -hmm. thank you again for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you all. Bye. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.